Hey guys, Vegas Romaniac. I'm gonna take the moose out of this tire and let's see together how this moose looks like after 200 hours or a little bit over 3,000 miles. First, let's take it out. The next tire I'm gonna put on, that's gonna be a surprise. Putting this moose in here was not the easiest thing in the world, but uh, taking it out, hopefully it's gonna be a lot easier. I have no fancy tire changing station. It's just a little axle I've bolted to the table. And I'm gonna use just tire irons and grease and soap and you know stuff that you would find around the garage. I always start with a C-clamp. Um, why I use a C-clamp? You have to push the bead on one side of the tire to be able to get it out. So a C-clamp works really, really well. Usually I have two of them just in case. And here it is. I crank this bead as much as I can. Um, so it's uh, it, it came off the rim already. Uh, it seems that uh, it will be a lot easier if I use a second uh, C-clamp. A little soapy water goes a long way, so I just spray it in here, plenty. The reason is that um, you need to, the bead to travel. And with the rim lock removed, um, let's give it a try and see what kind of a bite we'll be able to get out of it. So what I like to do is I like to put my, my tire irons in and get them ready so that I can start pulling on it. Now, on a moose, you could break the bead very, very easy. Um, you don't want to do that because that will be really, really bad. This is a tire that's coming out, so that's not a problem. But if you have a new tire that you're putting in, you don't want to force it with a very, very long tire iron like I have over here. You want to work with short ones, and if it opposes too much resistance, make sure that the bead is going inside here. Okay, so the first is in, the first bite is in. I'm gonna do the second bite. My tire iron is literally bending. So my tire iron literally bent. But yeah, the moose won, and the tire iron zero. I'm gonna take a shorter bite over here. This is gonna be the best way, so about three inches in between. And then the, 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 the bite will come off really nice. This one is too deep. There it is. And uh, that's it. It's free. And now it's getting easier and easier every time. Every time you take a bite, it's getting easier and easier. And it's out. At this point, the C-clamps can come off and uh, go from there. The first part is done. The bead on one side is out. Now I have to get the bead out on the other side, which is not always easy. Is um, the strategy of pulling the bead, the second bead out, with uh, something that is inflated basically to 14 PSI all the time. It's quite hard. So what I've done is I put this one all the way through until I buy the, the, the bead on the other side. And this should allow me to lift the bead. So right now the bead is lifted here at the bottom. So you can see that I'm trying to get the tire basically out this side. I've seen some people reversing the tire and then taking the bead out the other way and then trying to take the rim out of the tire that way. With a moose, it's quite hard. So this is the best way to do it. Uh, what you have to do is you have to put the, the, the tire iron under and then basically pop the bead this way. So I've switched tire irons, I have a small one that uh, just holds the bead up and now I'm going to try to put this one again under and get another bite out of the, uh, the, the tire on the other side. And there it is, see the second bite just came out. I'm going to be able to pull it out to the left and at this point you can just muscle it up and it comes out. I did not maintain this tube, this mousse inside here since I put it on. So. I put it on about a thousand miles ago and this, this is how it was when I put it on and now I'm taking it out. So I'm quite curious to see how it's going to look like. You're supposed to pull out the bead, put some grease in there and then put the bead back on. I don't feel like it. It's slowly coming out, that's for sure. I'm trying to do it in front of the camera so I'm fighting it more than I should.
And here it is. The moment of truth. So for those people that wondered how a moose looks like after about 3,000 miles, 200 hours on the bike, if you don't ride it on the street, it has a little bit of a pinch over here, but a tiny amount of pinch. Nothing crazy. I have one big one on this side. I'll show you in a second, but otherwise it looks really, really good. Now on this side, I did bite it a couple of times. So I have a, a, a bigger bite over here. So you could clearly see a bigger bite over here. Nothing that affects performance, if you ask me. And I have, this was a pinch over here. So this was a big bite. Most likely that's where I uh, bent my rim. So every, every, uh, every, one side looks absolutely good. The other side looks a little bit uh, hurt. So because I have a moose bib in this uh, rim, uh, it got bent a little bit in a couple of places. Um, so how I take them out, I find the bend where it is. Here it is, you can clearly see it in the picture. You see how it has a little bend on it and it was dinged because I hit it hard. Let me show you. Works way better than a hammer. And here it is. I'm gonna put a crescent wrench in it. I'm gonna tighten it up as much as I can and then just slowly go on it. And that is pretty good. One of the downsides of owning a moose is we have to have $25 worth of mounting compound. And I've been using this one for about 3,000 miles. Um, and this is how much I use so far. And that's it, it's full. I've used so little. A lot of people complain about how expensive moose is to maintain because of the tire compound. This is my tire compound. I'm gonna have this one for the rest of my life. And I have a surprise for you guys. I've never mounted this tire before. Moto Z Arena Hybrid. So this tire is has a couple of miles on it. I got it for free because it has a pinch in the tire itself because it was on a tubeless system. The tubeless system made a pinch into the sidewall and you couldn't hold air anymore. So now I'm going to put it in with a moose. Now before I install it, first thing I have to check out, see how this moose is going to fit into this tire. This is a 120, not a 110. So I want to see how much room there is left. Yeah, forget about it. It won't go in without uh, the uh, grease. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my grease ready. Man, this this really feels really really weird. And then I'm just gonna grease the shit out of it. And now we gotta shove it in the tire. So this is the dirtiest part of the job. And hopefully it's gonna fill it up good. Come on, get in there. Because this is a 120 tire. Not forget that. It's a 120 tire and it might be a little bit loose. Okay, checking the tire, make sure it's not directional. And it doesn't look like it's directional. I'm gonna get some lubrication on the bead on this side too. So I have a little bit more control uh, sliding in instead of uh, just muscling into place. I'm gonna start from the rim lock. So I could get a rim lock in. Okay, now, now it went over the lead. Okay, we're good. We're good. And now I'm gonna get everything dirty because I am very, very dirty. So I'm gonna try to take these gloves off without getting myself too dirty. And maybe these mousses are a little bit harder to install, but trust me, uh, not having to deal with pinch flats and worry when you're riding on a trail, this is absolutely worth it. This extra work that you do in your garage. Completely worth it. And here we are, we're gonna throw in a tire iron on this side. That's in. Let's see if we get another bite over here. And wow, to put it in, so much easier than taking it out. It's crazy. To put it in, so much easier than taking it out. So, where are we standing? Rim lock is under, which is very, very important. Uh, what I usually like to do is I like to always start from the rim lock for the last bead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a couple of tire irons over here and get this, uh, this rim lock, make sure it goes under the bead. Very, very important. And just work my way from there. And 
maybe now the tire body is gonna pay off the seven dollars that I spent for it. So let's see. Look, it fits and it works. Maybe. And now I'm gonna take my little tire iron and as I said in the beginning of the video, I could use a very, very long one or I could use a very, very short one. With a short one, you're not gonna break the bead. If you break the bead, the mousse is gonna be useless, the tire will fall off. So you should never, 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 never force it in. So a short tire iron is the best way to go. I'm still not over the rim lock, so this is gonna be a little bit of a fight. And here's my strategy. I put a wrench under, and then I'm going with a bead that way so it clears over here. You see how it cleared nicely under the rim lock? And then I'm gonna take my next tire iron and go in. Next tire iron to go in. I think th this is a 120 tire, so it's gonna be a lot easier to put in with a mousse because it's uh, a little bit, you know, more room in it. Even the bead I saw moving in here from all the slippery stuff that I put in, so I saw the bead going in here. So right now it's nice and deep. So that way, it sh this, this one is a clear indicator that this is gonna be really easy to push in. And look, and that's it. Can you believe how easy it was to push this mousse, mousse in? Now, I did have a mousse um, tube that was worn out, so it has a little bit more room inside this tire, but that's gonna basically feel like you have 10 PSI instead of 15 PSI all the time. And some people right about now will ask me, is because it's at 120, do you think that the bead will pop out because it's a 120 on a very, very small bib? Well, you have to stay subscribed to the channel because in the next couple of videos I'm gonna use this tire and I'll be able to let you know for sure. And as a bonus here at the end, a lot of people don't balance their tires, but look at this thing. You see? So it needs to be balanced because otherwise it will just wobble itself out of control and what's the point? You're just struggling riding. And by far these are my favorite balancing uh, weights. You put them on a spoke, just tie them in, and you're good to go, they're reusable. But if you cannot afford these, because these cost about $20 for about four ounces, you can make your own out of a piece of uh, metal, just a little groove in it for the spoke, and then and just put a little hose tie on it and you're good to go. And here's my best trick how to balance it using a magnet, a scale, and some weights. You let the tire rest into its final resting position, so right now it's here. Take a marker and mark the spoke right opposite from where it rested, so the one on top, so you know which one you're working with. Put the magnet on it, and then add weights at 90 degrees. So keep the tire at 90 degrees, and add weights until the tire just doesn't move anymore. And here it is, it's balanced right now, so any position I put it in, it doesn't move from it. Now that we know it's balanced, I'm gonna weigh these and see how much I have to upset the rim lock on this other side. And here it is, zeroed out, putting all the weights that I took off the spoke in, 233 grams. That is a heavily unbalanced wheel, so we're gonna balance it with 233 grams. And there it is, 230 grams-ish, uh, three pieces to hold everything together, plus these two little ones. Here it is, on the bike, with all the weights in the world on it, to balance it nicely. Uh, this bike is ready to ride. Thanks for watching. Stay subscribed to the channel. I'm gonna bring you some updates to see how this one is going to hold on, not only as far as the tire goes, but also the beep inside a 120 tire. And uh, enjoy this footage that I have at the end. Uh, most likely something that I'm going to find left over from some cool ride that I took somewhere sometimes a while back. It's a hill climb, man. Yeah. Okay. Just pull it back. Pull it back? Yeah. So if it breaks away so easy. Or you could just drop it this way or something, you know? Or just write it up. You might be able to write it up. Wanna give it a try? Get on it? Huh? You wanna go write it up? Give it a try? I think you have enough traction. Fiddle the clutch. 
put the front back in the truck. I'll hold the rear. Okay. Get on it. Huh? Get on it normally. Yeah. And then kick it normally, you know? Yeah, like that. You're not going anywhere. Just don't put it in, before you put it in gear, let me know so I can let it go. You gotta give it like two or three fast. That's how you, how you start two strokes. I just find my compression stroke and kick. Truck smells so bad. Whatever he put in it stinks. Yeah, he got stuck on the hill. <laughs> <laughs> 